Check out UT Coins for you for all of your ultimate team coin needs. Use the code CHESS for 5% off. And just a quick note, it's going to be a massive, massive mini episode tomorrow. Be ready for that. Hey guys, how's it going? Chess back again with another episode of the Chelsea Career Mode here on Xbox One. It's episode number 50. We're at the half century mark. And we're coming into this one in, in, into a massive, massive game, really. we're uh, Both teams are away. It's at neutral ground. It's at Wembley Stadium. It's the FA Cup semi-final. A massive game. So you can see we uh, progressed through against Norwich in the previous round. 4-0 with a comfortable win. And uh, Tottenham are playing Fulham in the opposite semi-final game. Also to be played at Wembley, of course, but uh, Wembley played on the same day, obviously. But uh, I'm kind of pointing out obvious things that you already know. But we get the first effort here in the 34th, 35th minute. Michael Royce draws a good save out of Brad Guzan. But it wasn't until the second half that the game really livened up. Both teams were really, really nervous, you could tell, heading into this one. Because it is a massive game at Wembley. And Gabby Agbonlahor does the business six minutes into the second half giving Aston Villa a decent 1-0 lead. It's a great finish. Goalkeeper perhaps could have done better. Maybe it was because he was rushing out so fast he wasn't quite able to react to the shot. And uh, we went 1-0 down. But I brought on uh, Andre Scherler for Michael Royce, who was tiring a little bit after playing uh, you know, a decent role in the past, uh, in yesterday's episode, with uh, all of the uh, the cup action and the league action that was going on in that one. Of course, we progressed through it in the, uh, in the Champions League. And I was hoping to, uh, to have decent cup fortune in this one again and uh, just a few minutes after going 1-0 down we're actually get, able to get ourselves back on level terms it's Marco Van Ginkel who uh, finds his way into the box pops the ball into the back of the net for his first goal for the club since uh, we started this series it's a decent turn from Andre Scherler finds him on the edge of the box decent first touch and a really accurate finish across it into the bottom corner I was very very pleased to uh, to be able to get ourselves back into the game and Devil Louise is going to try and clear the ball here doesn't quite do it properly Andreas Weiman is going to find himself on the edge of the box and he will find the ball back at his feet. The goalkeeper just about gets something on it and Ashley Cole is there on the line to hook it clear. We don't quite fall behind thanks to some expert defending from Ashley Cole and Frank, quite frankly some woeful finishing from uh, from Andreas Weiman but Aston Villa are going to make me pay for, uh, for slagging them off there because unfortunately... Ramirez's first touch puts the ball straight into the path of uh, Hernanes, a signing that they will have made from Lazio either in January or uh, or the summer of this season because he wasn't there last year. That's a fantastic finish. You'll see from the replay, Ramirez's first touch just takes it across him and into the path of the on midfielder. He just gets himself out-muscled and uh, it's a great finish. It's about quarter, absolutely no chance. But we find ourselves behind. No, we got ourselves back in it when we were behind against PSG in the previous episode. Where are we going to be able to do the same thing here? Lo Remy flashes the ball past that near post in the 89th minute we're really trying everything to get ourselves back in this one and it was on target all the way up until it got right in front of the goal and then swerved away at the last minute it was absolutely devo then Van Ginkel is going to be involved on the edge of the box into stoppage time now because we got a late stoppage time equaliser against Watford in the previous episode Remy's going to hit another really good shot but the goalkeeper makes a great save going to ball oh, going to ball we're going to have the ball go out for a corner we're going to whip it in it's going to be another decent uh, decent opportunity as you can see Brad Guzan is just such a good goalkeeper his reactions are fantastic was a very very good save but Willian's going to take the corner he's going to stand it up up and uh, we're going to have to wait and see whether we can get ourselves back in the game. David Luiz goes up. We can't quite get on the end of it. Aston Villa hook it clear and the final whistle is going to go. We're out of the FA Cup at the semi-final stage, which is absolutely devastating because, of course, we didn't win the FA Cup last year either. We won the Capital One Cup and the Champions League. So the FA Cup goes amiss yet again. But we don't have time to lick our wounds. We're straight back in action against Borussia Dortmund in another cup semi-final. It's the Champions League this time. And we're away from home in the opening leg yet again. So if we could get an away goal just like we did in Paris in the previous round in the quarter-final, I would be very, very pleased indeed. But uh, Signal Iduna Park looks absolutely spectacular at night under the lights. So you can see Juventus and Bayern Munich in the other semi-final. So whoever wins this one definitely still has a tough test in the final but this is only the first leg of course we still have a lot of uh, a lot of football yet to play but we go 1-0 down after half an hour I really think Petr Cech could have done better with that if he's going to get down to it which he does he does very well to get down to it but you've got to push it safe you can't just leave it there two yards in front of the goal for uh, for Ilkay Gundogan to just run onto put into an empty net you've got to push that safe there are two men over at the back post I was really disappointed with that but uh, nonetheless we take the knock and we have to come back stronger and we did just that trying to get ourselves back in it 
just before half time. Leroy Ferry involved in the play is going to play the ball beautifully over to Andre Scheller. Great first touch. Takes it inside one. Takes it inside two. Finds the back of the net. We are back on level terms before half time. And that will have knocked their confidence heading in just before the break. And of course, an away goal as well is absolutely crucial in the Champions League. And we've got at least one already. So we're going to try and push on in the second half and get ourselves into the lead if we possibly could. But they were going to come close before the first half was even out to getting themselves 2 1 in front. Unfortunately, the snapshot flies just wide of that far post. So into the second half we go. We're going to catch them on the counter attack here. Luis Muriel hasn't scored for a while, definitely suffering from some sort of goal drought. And he gets his way, gets himself away from the defence beautifully. And then it's just such a wasteful finish. You can tell he's low on confidence and just isn't, you know, firing on all cylinders right now. He isn't acting on instinct. He's overthinking everything. And they thought, I've got to put power behind this to beat the goalkeeper. Put too much behind it, and it flew behind the uh, behind the goal into the stand. Really disappointing effort. And then again, Petek makes a good save towards the end of the game. We catch him on the counter attack yet again. Leroy Fer is going to find Andre Schurler for a second time. He's already done this once. Can he bring it down? He can. Can he step inside the defender once? He can. Can he find the back of the net? He can't. Mats Hummels got beaten once for the first goal. He wasn't going to get beaten again. He gets the block in at the last ditch attempt. Then Kevin De Bruyne is trying to force an opportunity towards the end of the game. Torres is going to pick the ball up on the edge of the box from Danilo. He strikes the foot of the post in stoppage time. A second away goal would have been absolutely wonderful to take back to Stamford Bridge for the second leg. Unfortunately, we don't do so. We only get the one, but we're still on level terms. So if we can win the second leg outright, then we will go through regardless of scoreline. So we head back to the Premier League now. Again, another rotation-ish side. Divock Quarter, Kalas, Kurt Zuma involved. A lot of youngsters in this one. Van Kinkel again, Lucas Piazzon. We're having a lot of trouble with rotating the squad. The the, uh, the games are coming thick and fast at the minute. We are fortunate to have quite a large squad and quite decent, uh, you know, depth in the squad but at the minute I really am missing Arturo Vido I have to be honest he is uh, he's makes the uh, makes the team tick and we're missing him right now but Sunderland going to get the first opportunity of the game Johnson is going to whip the ball in beautiful cross with his left foot and Stephen Fletcher is very very good in the air but not quite good enough that time to beat Thibaut Courtois the header was just a little bit tame and uh, he's easily gobbled up by the goalkeeper we're going to get a chance of our own here Lucas Piazzon is going to play a nice one too with Fernando Torres ball's going to end up in the back of the net great finish and if he'd played the ball first time, Torres, I think he would have been onside. Just because he delayed to take the touch before playing it, Lucas Piazzon just strayed a yard or two the wrong side of the defensive line, and uh, the linesman saw fit to raise his flag, and the goal was disallowed. So where we head later on into the second half, Fernando Torres trying to find a little bit of space on the edge of the box. He does so, works it beautifully. Goalkeeper palms it onto the post. Torres hits the post at the end of the last game, finds the woodwork again in the beginning stages of this one. He's not having too much luck right now. He's working the opportunity as well. He's playing well, but just not finding the goals, which is something that we haven't really done recently. Since that win against Norwich uh, a couple of a couple of episodes ago, we haven't been scoring a lot of goals. It's been one here, two there. Not been, uh, you know, really setting the world alight, but we took a 1-0 lead there. Fantastic header from Fernando Torres, getting himself onto the score seat just after half-time. And now we're going to come close again. You see how many men are around the ball there. Five Sunderland shirts trying to close the ball down. Eventually it drops to Leroy Fur. Decent power on the shot, but it's straight down the uh, straight down the middle to uh, to Kieran Westwood. So I made a change. Bought a little bit Remy for uh, for Oscar. Not for Oscar, with Oscar for uh, for Kevin De Bruyne and Fernando Torres. And the first thing that Loic Remy did was get injured. And not only was it an injury, it was a substantial injury as well. It's a broken ankle. It's the second broken ankle we've had this season already. I'm devastated, to be completely honest, because Loic Remy has had such a fantastic impact for us since coming in in the January transfer window. He's got something like six goals in 10 appearances or something silly like that. He's been so, so electric for us. And uh, oh, it's not even it's not even a dirty challenge. It's just, I don't even know how he's hurt his ankle from that, unless he's just fallen funny. Oh, I really don't know, but that's so frustrating. I mean, he is going to be a big miss towards the uh, the rundown of the uh, the rest of the season because he's going to be out for three months. But the pace here of Warris, I have no idea who he is, but the acceleration to get away from Kurt Zuma there is absolutely insane. After Zuma missed the flight of the ball and let it go behind him, there was no way the striker was going to miss. That acceleration was next level. I literally, my jaw hit the floor. I just couldn't believe it. And uh, we'd shoved Eden Hazard opt up, opt up. Opt up? 
up top on his own. We hit the woodwork again. Second effort gets really well saved by Kieran Westwood. Gets up and across to make a good save from the follow-up effort. We're going to have another chance from the corner. Lucas Piazza whips the ball in. First effort isn't very well uh, cleared away. Drops to Quadro Masanwa. First shot blocked. Second shot blocked. Kurt Zuma. Another shot well saved by Kieran Westwood. We just can't seem to get that second goal in games right now. We don't have the luck in front of goal. It's just not going for us. Ivanovic with the header from the corner and it's straight at the goalkeeper. So we only take a point from that one. We drop more points in the Premier League. Not what we needed. We dropped points against Watford in the previous episode. We dropped points against Sunderland again here. We're now three points behind Arsenal. Still within one game's reach. But as you can see, their goal difference is 12 superior to ours. So we're going to need them to slip up if we're going to stand a chance of winning that Premier League title, I think, in all honesty. But that's going to bring this week's episode to a close. So uh, thank you very much. Or this Friday episode to a close it's the end of the week that's what i'm trying to say but thank you very much for watching guys there will be a massive massive career mode mini episode coming tomorrow at some point so do keep your eyes on your sub boxes for that if uh, you missed the previous episode there's an annotation on screen over a little snippet of gameplay there if you want to subscribe to the channel then feel free to do so link in the description and on screen follow me on twitter as well at chesnoy gaming link to that is in the description as well but that's all for today guys like i say big big little update video for you tomorrow not to be missed because i need a lot of your feedback so be sure to uh, to stick around for that but thank you very much for watching guys and i will see you next time